Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with this presentation. Alrighty. Well, good afternoon. I am Russell Waters, a senior computer science major from Huntsville, Alabama. And today I'll be talking about fauvism and expressionism. So to get started, um, like I said, I am Russ Waters. I'm from Huntsville, Alabama. I will be graduating this May, and um, I'll be graduating with a bachelor's in computer science. So again, to a little quick introduction, fauvism. Um, so the time play, time period in which that took place, um, it started in 1905, um, went down to 1910. Um, as far as expressionism. Um, when I was doing my research, um, a lot of a lot of articles tended to, or a lot of articles said the, the expressionism started in the early 20th century, but it really started right after fauvism. Um, people say that expressionism expressionism really you know came from the fauvism movement, and which will you know get deeper to each one of those, and which how you know how both of those came about. So first, we're going to talk about fauvism. Um, as you can see, it's characterized by intense color and bold brushwork. So as you can see the image on the right, um, that's a lot of you know exotic colors. They they're bright. As you can see the blue is popping out from the tree. The green and the oranges, you know, those colors typically you don't see, you know, artwork or together. But in fauvism, um, you know, this allows artists to create works of art. You know, and it, usually it pleases them. You know, rather than the crowd. And so. I meant to heavy use of complementary colors. And also what another thing with fauvism um, is they focus on the formal aspects of pictorial organization. So as you see with the picture to the right, um, we see the trees, we see the path, um, the green represents the grass, you know. So this is a little, this is a landscape. So as we talk about expressionism, um, this is art that you know ex expresses inner realities onto the art world. And so um Basically, with this, what I think when I think about expressionism um, is, you know, the artist is basically, you know, value valuing what they uh, believe is important as far as, you know, putting it into art. So, you know, on the canvases or, you know, whatever they're painting on, um, they feel like the meaning behind it, it's, you know, it's really behind a personal feeling rather than, you know, what traditional, um, you know, rather than like the traditional realities things. So as far as expression is, um, they really focus on being more emotionally involved, you know, involved with themselves and you know, also using that energy to, you know, paint their paint their works. And also, you know, also with expressionism um, works with this, they tend to um, center around anger, frustration. So I see with the picture to the left, um, this picture represents a, a, a person that's being, you know, it looks like he's shocked or, you know, scared of something. And so Expression really focus on like you know emotional aspects of people and you know different ways they can show it throughout their work. So <clears throat> the beginning of fauvism um, really started when the uh, Gustave Moore, like Gustave More, um, he was a very famous you know artist during the 1900s, and he influenced um, you know French painters Henri Matisse, Albert Marquet, and Georges Rout to you know develop this develop to develop this group called the Fauves, you know, and that means wild beasts. Um, and this group, like I said, focus on personal expression. And so, you know, one thing I also want to point out with Fauvism and expressionism is, you know, they're they're typically, you know, they're somewhat the same. Um, even though they're, you know, coming from different time periods, they were kind of um, both kind of work hand in hand as far as artists, um, you know, painting for themselves rather than, you know, the crowd or the you know, society, you know, what traditional society thinks is, you know, art, you know, they really focus on art to them and really, um, you know, redefining it as you see when they start this movement. And so um, they start, you know, they start to use more vibrant colors like you see with the picture um, and, you know, really use that as a means to, you know, get that movement started. And, you know, that's kind of what helped expressionism, expressionism get started um, as well. Um, when four German students guided by Ernest Ludwig Kirchner, um, they established a group called The Bridge. And basically what The Bridge is, they thought that they were going to be the bridge to the new um, the new form of art in the future. So they thought they were uh, leading the way as ter in terms of, you know, changing art. And so there's another group as well called The Blue Riders, and also in, also in Germany. 
Um, but these two groups help, you know, really start the expressionism movement. And so uh, another thing about this movement was that, you know, with these painters, they were in a revolt against the uh, superficial naturalism of academic oppression. And so that was another, impressionism was another, um, you know, style of art that, um, you know, the traditional, you know, people in traditional Europe were, you know, found, you know, pretty cool. But these, you know, these four young men saw, uh, you know, saw art in a different view and decided to, you know, go that route and really, you know, express art um, in their own way. And so that was, I thought like that was pretty cool and how they, you know, took initiative in doing that. And so, you know, some of the artwork that we're going to look at today, um, we're going to look at two by Henry Matisse. Um, woman, woman with a hat, and Le Bonheur de Vivre, de and then we're also going to look at two more art pieces um, from the Expressionism movement. Um, one by Ernest Lowe Kirchner, and then one by Carl Smith Rotloff. So uh, first, first one we'll get into is Henry Matisse, Woman with a Hat. Um, this is actually a picture of Henry Matisse's wife, <clears throat> and so um, as you can see with fatherism, you know, there's a, there's definitely a use of vibrant colors. Um, you know, the green pops out, the blue, the oranges. And, you know, also another thing I want to uh, take note of is with fathers, they use, they're not using natural colors. You know, they're using colors that are, that are more, you know, exotic, um, you know, colors that, you know, please them. And, you know, when I look at this, this is a, you know, pleasing picture and see all these different colors, you know, come together to make this woman with a hat on. And, you know, it may seem so simple, but, I think that's cool how um, Matisse was able to, you know, capture this, capture this image in which I'm, he probably did um, saw his wife do this, and then onto the next one, um, Joy of Life, and this is actually a, a painting from um, the textbook, our textbook that we've um, been looking at this semester. But um, basically, with this one, as you can see, there's use of vibrant colors as well, and um, as you can see. They're um, they're naked, and so as far as <clears throat> as far as personal expression, they thought that they were, um, you know, they didn't place no limits on how what they could, you know, draw, and so they really felt confident in, you know, their art and what they could depict. And this is just another good example of fauvism and how Henry Matisse was able to, you know, paint this oil on canvas picture and really, um, you know, point out those details. And also, like I said, use of vibrant colors is really a big thing in fauvism. And so we're going to the next one. Um, our next piece is an expressionist movement by Ernest Lugwood Kirchner, and it's called Street. Uh, that's in, that was made in 1908. And so with this one, this really explored the expressive possibilities of color, form, and composition in creating images of contemporary life. And so as you see, the crowds are in the back, um, or you can see a number of people in the back, you know, that represents a, you know, a busy day on the street. <clears throat> and the artist being able to, you know, paint the road pink, that really helps. Um, kind of set set the um setting as far as you know what's going on and so that pink street is what we see right there and then it's just crowded with a lot of people and you know the use of colors as well is is great and so we're gonna go on to the next one uh, by car smith Rotloaf. and this is pharisees and so what we, what we have here is <clears throat> um like i said with expressionism they rejected the traditional art theory and so they you know um, this is really influences by, you know, African and ocean, oceanic art that Carl Schmidt for all of, um, that that was necessary to, you know, implement or implement in his, um, art piece. And so really get that together. But, you know, um, the organization with this, I can see what colors, the colors are bright. Um, you know, they're expressing what she, they're expressing what he thought what Pharisees, you know, what would look like. And so with this, um, and this is another example of expressionism and the use of it and, and it looks good <laughs> it's my, probably one of my favorite pieces uh the ones i looked at just because of the, the you know the color scheme and you know the way that their faces are aligned in a you know a, a symmetrical well not symmetrical but a um, rectangular manner but um that's that concludes our last piece and here are the resources that i use and yeah but thank you again and that is um pretty much it for my slideshow. Thank you.